In short, it was a mess. That's, it was a mess. But it was just kind of a panic thing, thinking that the water is out. There is no water. Do not use your water. When I first found out about the water leak, uh, I was actually in Ripley working for the day, and it was on Twitter. I, I just checked briefly, and there was a proclamation from Governor Tomlin that said, do not use the water in Charleston. Uh, and that was really kind of the gist of it. I, I didn't know what else to expect, and I was just looking for more answers, as everybody was. Realizing the, the sort of precariousness of, um, well, of water quality and the security of, of water quality. And, you know, the more, the more rocks we picked up and looked under, you know, the more we found. And for me, it was really an education in um, the entire ecosystem of, of looking at water. What, what are the political implications? Um, what are the, you know, there, there are so many different groups who concern themselves with water. They don't all agree on, on how you look at water quality. Um, when the, the crisis happened in, in Flint, Michigan, it, it was tragic, but it also confirmed for us what we were really seeing, even just trying to investigate issues of, of looking at water quality um, in this state. Um, so it's, it's been a real eye-opener, um, but it also really points the way to the power of some of these emerging technologies, potentially, maybe not now, but in, in the future, um, and of community engagement and um, being part of how we look at, at water quality and, and security in our communities. Uh, we, I was lucky, I had water, but that meant I was sort of ground zero for people who needed showers, who needed to fill up water bottles, uh, for people who just kind of wanted a place where they could get away from the no water situation wherever they were and feel a sense of normalcy for a, for a little bit. Um, so I, I was very, very fortunate. But our staff, our reporters, uh, the, you know, their families, many of them, uh, I think nearly all of them, they lived in apartments and in homes where they didn't have water either. So this was a story that they were covering but they were also experiencing firsthand. Yeah, so the, I think one of the difficult things when you try to compare any natural resource like water to, um, to another natural resource like coal or any mineral that maybe gets mined uh, is, is that the, the value, the economic value of water spread across so many different facets of life that it almost gets, pardon the, a pun, but it gets diluted. You know, its real value uh, gets diluted because you've got a tourism sector, you've got a quality of life sector. People's willingness to pay for clean water is huge. Um, you've got a recreational sector, you've got the power industry sector. Um, and then of course you have the drinking water sector and all of these things uh, draw on the, the, the value of water, uh, but there's no single thing to point to. There's no tons per year produced in a county. So I was over the Capitol and I remember coming back and smelling something in the air but not really thinking anything of it. Um, I, I think that, it, you know, at that point no one had any clue. Um, surprising enough, the instinct didn't kick in for everyone in that area uh, immediately, but um, I remember coming back to the station and a few hours later we found out um, and then the West Virginia American Water um, it, and the, the governor's office issued the do not use notice um, or the ban on using everything, uh, using the water for anything except to flush the toilet or to put out fires. Uh, the, the do not use bans were lifted. People were able to flush their, their pipes. And we were explaining to people, you know, this is the process that we've been told. This is the multi-step process you go through to flush out your pipes. But there were all these residual questions. You know, will any of the MCHM stay in my pipes? Will it cling to the metal? Uh, and, you know, what about my hot water heater? And no matter how many times we would explain the process as it had been explained to us, viewers weren't believing what they were hearing and what they were seeing. Because there had been that confusion in the beginning and because there had been some mixed messaging early on and then throughout the rest of the process. And when that trust is broken, 
it's very difficult to regain that. And that was the biggest problem I think we faced, not only during the crisis, but months and months and months after. 